Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to be here. Um, I had a thought, and uh, I've been voicing my opinion here lately. That's all I have is my opinion, but I hope that my advice will always be based upon true knowledge ripened with wisdom. That's the FFA motto for people that don't know. Um, I'm looking at the word time in the Bible. I come out here with a thought in my mind. And, you know, I love to do simple, easy to understand topics because I believe the gospel needs to be simple. I believe the return of the Lord needs to be simple. That you got people maybe that might tune in one day that might just happen to come by and they might hear something so simple. And I don't apologize for being simple because not everybody is a theologian, including me. I have a program on my phone. And it tells me that the word time is mentioned in the Bible 750 times. One place that I just happened to remember was in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, where it talks about there's a time to be born and a time to die. I just happened to think of that just before I went to air. But... I want to ask you a real simple question. This is simply not hard at all, but I want you to just see yourself doing this. How many have used a microwave and stood there looking at the digital numbers? And you're looking at the digital numbers turning to zero. And you open the door before the bell starts going off, before the ding, ding, ding starts going off. You know, we expect the microwave to work. When we go to the microwave and we hit the buttons, we expect the microwave to operate. Um, I come out here this morning and I've got this little watch right here and I look down at it and I hadn't set the time on it yet, but I just found myself setting the time before I went to air. You know, the time was off by an hour. I had to back up the clock to match the new time, the correct time. You know, we expect the microwave to work. You know, it's so aggravating when you go there and say the microwave is operating, but say you stop it before it gets done. And the microwave sort of like don't know what to do. So you have to hit the right button to send it back to neutral. I don't want to get too technical. You know what I'm talking about. When you leave a microwave, say, with a minute and 12 seconds, and you don't want the minute and 12 seconds anymore, you got to hit the delete button to set it back to zero where you can start cooking something else. Again, if you don't, it's just going to stay there until you get ready to cook again. And and it it's thinking that, well, you want me to cook for another minute and 12 seconds. And that's exactly what it's going to do. Um, it has a program or steps to follow. And a microwave sometimes is so aggravating, especially when you don't have eyes to be able to see stuff as clear as you need to. 
you just sort of punching buttons when you really can't see. You're just trying to make it operate the best way you can. We wait patiently till the food is hot. We'll sit there. I've done it before. I've opened up a can of Campbell's soup. It usually takes two minutes with a paper towel on top of it to keep it from splattering over the whole oven. And so usually two minutes does it a pretty good job. It's a good little meal if you're not really all that hungry. But you sit there and you wait with anticipation of that meal being done. Let me get cut to the chase. God has a time clock too. Ain't got nothing to do with a microwave. God has a time clock as well. We just don't know when he started pushing the buttons. And we don't know when the time clock is going to get to zero. See, God has his time clock. He knows the setting. See, man doesn't know the setting. But God knows the setting of his time clock. His time clock is on the money. His doesn't need AC power to run his time clock. He is the power. He supplies his own power source. And he is in full control this fifth day of November with all the stuff going on in politics. God is in ultimate control. You can just take that to the bank. If you think this election has snuck up on God, you are foolishly mistaken. God knew this from the foundation of the world. He knows all wrongdoing. He knows every bit of wrongdoing from both sides of the issue God knows all wrongdoing. God knows all things. This didn't sneak up on the Lord. The Lord had all this in his, in his time setting. You got to remember, didn't I say a minute ago, God has his time clock. He knows the setting of the time clock. See, man doesn't know the setting. We think we know. But we really have no clue of his time setting. But here's what I do know. He knows when life is done. He knows when life is done. I mean, life as we know it, far as him returning for his church, he knows when time is up. If you was sitting there watching the microwave right now and you started seeing the numbers get down to zero, 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 you're going to know that the bell is fixing to ding. And it's going to ding, ding, ding for like five times. And then it's only going to ding to remind you that you got something in the oven and it dings only like one time in a whole minute. And it's just a warning that that the dinging has already taken place, meaning there's no more cooking involved because the cooking process is over. There's going to be a reminder when the coming of the Lord happens, people's going to know that God's church is gone. People's going to know that they have heard the gospel, and they have heard it, and they have heard it, and they have heard it. And they're going to realize that the dinging is over with. And they're going to find themselves being left here. 
He knows when life is done. He's the one that started this program from the foundation of the world, and he knows when he's going to end this segment of life as we know life. He knows when that is. Things are heating up fast. If I went in there right now and operated my microwave and I put something in there and I waited two minutes for it to cook, you know what? I don't have to wait long. I don't have to wait long at all because in two minutes, it's going to be dinging quick. And see, we just don't know when the dinging is going to go off, but it's going to go off. With all this stuff going on with the election and all of this stuff, believe me, Jesus is returning. And he's returning, like I heard a lady say this morning, he's returning when we have no clue, but God's given us clues all around us. All around us, the clue is, is, is evident. Things are heating up fast. Soon the bell will sound. We just don't know the time frame of when that bell was going to sound. We See, I put a question mark down here where I wrote the word soon. We just don't know when the soon began, and we don't know when the soon is going to end. But we know that we're in the window of that word soon. Soon the bell will sound. Now, the Bible calls it a trumpet. The trumpet shall sound. But using the analogy of the microwave, you don't have a trumpet on a microwave. You have a little bell that's very annoying. And you know what? I think people are annoyed sometimes when they come out, especially on my channel, they are annoyed at the fact that my desire is to talk plain so that everybody can understand. I don't repent for that. I don't repent for it, not one bit, because I have no clue of who's going to come here today, tomorrow, and a year from now to watch this. I would like for people to know on the other end of the spectrum that I was willing to warn people that the dinging is going to go off soon. And I believe it's nearer than we want to believe. He will return to his microwave. See, we're living in a sense on earth. We're living in a microwave right now. God is allowing this stuff to prepare the people that are, are ready to go to be called away just like that. He's preparing people to leave this world behind and he's going to come back for the ones in his microwave, meaning the ones in his church. I'm not talking about the building with the four corners. I'm talking about he's going to come back for the ones in his belief system, in his sequence. He's going to come back for people that believe in him and trust in him that is found inside his microwave. The Lord is willing for other people to come into the microwave, into the ark of safety, so to speak. Will you be found in his microwave? Will you be found in the microwave? Oh, yeah, I'm a church member. That don't put you in the microwave. Oh, well, I attended church last week, but that don't put you in the microwave. What puts you in the microwave is when you believe that Jesus is the only one that gave you salvation. Jesus is the only one that is able to give you rock-solid salvation. 
Church membership can't do it. Tithing can't do it. Obedience in this world can't do it. Living a good life can't do it. Being successful in life ain't going to give you salvation. It just ain't going to happen. Church membership ain't going to give you salvation. Church membership ain't going to put you in the microwave that the Lord is ready to come back and get the people that are inside the, the warmth of that microwave oven. I'm not saying that we're going to be in a microwave. I'm saying that God has his few protected in the place of where when he comes, you know, if I come out here in my room right now and I'm looking for something, what ain't it nice to be able to know when I come out here that I know where this is. I know where my glasses are. I know where this book is. I know where my watch is. I, you know, what I don't even have to hunt it. I know where I left it. But how many people is I, I had it, but I don't know where it is. How many people's going to be caught like that? Lord, look for me. Look a little bit harder because I'm here. I'm screaming at you. No, he knows where his church is. He knows where his believer is. And all he's going to do is come back and get the ones that are in his microwave. Will you be found in his microwave? That's a question that only you can answer. Don't base it on your church membership. Don't base it on your money you give to the church. Don't base it on the number of times that you go to church. Base it on the fact that do you know the author of the program of the microwave? Are you in his protective bubble of his microwave? And I got great news for you. His microwave still has room. His microwave still has room. You still have room to get into the place of safety. But let me tell you something. Time is drawing nigh. Time is getting short. Time is to the point now when we don't know when the numbers start counting down to zero. You know, when they shoot off a rocket at Cape Canaveral down there, I always loved to watch when it got down to T minus nine seconds. And the person started counting. And when that clock went down to five, you started seeing smoke in that rocket. And it still got five more seconds to wait, but they're f firing that engine at T minus five seconds. And as it counts down to five, four, three, you know what they say then? Engine sequence start. They say that at five seconds, but that rocket is wanting to go. And I mean this wanting to go like right now. And when it gets down to zero, you know what you see? That massive rocket lifts up off that launch pad and it's blowing a pile of smoke and a pile of power. And people, that's exactly the way the Lord's going to do it when he comes again. I hope that you're ready. I hope that I'm just not out here blowing a bunch of smoke. Nothing has got God on the ropes right now. There's men and women that are on the ropes. And they have no clue that they're going to get left. And my job is to come out here and warn. I hope I've done that. Call on the Lord today. Call on him. 
elderlyministry.com. Leave a message. I'll be glad to talk with you if you need my help. Thank you all again for watching.